for your goodness and your mercy. We give you praise. We assemble in the house of the Lord and we do a lot of talk about praise. We do a lot of talk about worship. But how many of you can agree tonight that there are times when we come into the house of the Lord? I want to praise him and I want to worship him, but I can't do it with my mouth. So God has given us hands and he's given us feet in order to tell our story in order to be able to lift up his name in a way that it doesn't contaminate our neighbor. So I'm here right now in this moment of giving him praise and worshiping him. That if I could tell you some of the things that I've been through just on this week, words would destroy this message. But if I could just take about 10 seconds and show you, not tell you, how good God has been to me, it would look something like this. Because God has brought me out of some situations just this week that causes me to slide from side to side. Now lastly, I want to tell you about for his goodness and his mercy, and then I'm going to let you take your seat. Not only is praise exhibited by what we say and what we do, but I've come to understand in my years of salvation, in my years of being a worshiper, that there are times in my life that I realize that the praise that I'm doing in season works out of season. So let me help you understand that when we ask you to clap your hands, when we ask you to do a dance, we're not asking you for praise in this season. I've got miracles in my life. I know you don't know me, hallelujah, and that's good. Some miracles in my life, one as an example, would be the tumor that I had on my brain, on my os I don't need no help for that. That's mine. Hallelujah. On my occipital. I used to pass out. I used to fall out because I didn't know that it was there. Long story short, Went to the doctor. They said I had a tumor on the occipital lobe. They took pictures to prove it. Come on, somebody. They said, we want you to come back in three months. I'm still talking about praise and worship. Because you don't understand why sometimes people are throwing their hand up. It doesn't make sense to you. You don't understand why I might be hollering because you don't have anything to go with what I'm doing. After three months, of praying and fasting and going to the appointment. I have x-rays with a tumor and x-rays without a tumor. So here is the point. Sometimes I might be praising them here in Orlando, Florida, but I'm not thinking about what's happening in Orlando, Florida. Sometimes I go back in my mind and I start thinking about a tumor I had. And I have to take a had praise moment. I have to take a praise moment that said what could have been didn't. I had to give God a praise that if the devil had his way, things could have been different. So just before you take your seat, I want you to give God a if it had been. Come on, think about something that the devil tried to get. 
put a pin right there we'll come back let us pray God is great and God is good And we thank you, Lord, for this food. By your hands tonight, we all will be fed. Come on, somebody catch it. Give us, Lord, come on, my daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Now clap those hands while you're sitting. Come on, clap, clap. It's gonna be that kind of a night. Hallelujah. Ho, 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 ho! It's gonna be that kind of a night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ibo bo shake up. Hallelujah. We give honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give honor. Now, let me say this right quick. One of the things, mother, I got a whole long list here. I'm not a sports person. My husband is. Um, Y'all see that lady back there getting it, getting it, getting it? Don't look at her, because then you might want to do the same thing she's doing. Stop there. <laughs> I'm not a sports person. I'm not a sports person, but I do know this one thing as it relates to football, that when the ball is not in play, 
they stop the clock. Now, when you're administering the word and people are praising and worshiping, you're supposed to stop the clock. You can't blame me that I was up here too long because the, the word of the Lord wasn't in pray, play. Praise was working. And when praise, ha, 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 when praise was going on, you got to stop the clock. try to get through this Sunday school lesson. We're going to try to get through my Sunday school lesson. Y'all sit, sit, sit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has something very special for us tonight, amen, and he wants to bless us, and Mother said it, amen. God is already at work. You praising him over here, but he's working over there. So don't be surprised that once you leave the convention that things may have shifted since we took off. Oh, oh, oh. Don't do nothing. Don't nobody. No, sit, sit. Hallelujah. Some things have shifted. Let me uh, teach my Sunday school lesson and get out of the way. Um, it's not Sunday, but it's my Thursday night Sunday school lesson. I don't claim to be anything in the church except a Sunday school teacher. Amen? Let me go down my list. Amen. Don't start the clock yet. Hold on one second. We give honor to our presiding bishop and chief apostle, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, to our first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Macklin, to our second assistant presiding bishop, the man who saw green, my last name, my last name before I got married was green. So I'm here for it, Bishop Wooten. To the general board, hallelujah. To all of the other bishops, to Bishop Galbraith and the board of bishops, we honor you tonight. And then to Mother Lewis, our general supervisor. Thank you, Mother Lewis and Bishop Sheard, for this opportunity to share in this 73rd International Women's Convention. Mother Lewis, you are indeed our spiritual mom, and we love you. I too well know the love of a mother from a general supervisor standpoint as Mother Willie Mae Rivers had been my supervisor in South Carolina and our general supervisor, Emerita, at this point, for me over 30 years. Amen. 
So Mother, Mother Lewis, I want you to know that we love you right back. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for holding us close. And celebrating you one day or two days is just not enough. But I hope you can take our appreciations that we have given to you just to know how much we love you as our mother. To Mother Huey, the first assistant general supervisor, hallelujah. To Mother Vanessa Gatlin, the second assistant general supervisor. I had a recent experience to travel with her and fellowship outside of the church. Somebody say outside. And she left me with this thought. I thought to myself after having been with her outside the church, I really like her. I really like her. You know, the Bible tells us to love one another, but I hadn't found the scripture about the like part. So like is a higher calling, if you will, to be able to like someone, and I like you. We also want to honor, amen, the third general supervisor, the one and only Mother Walton, amen? I spoke to her and I told her, I said, now you always up there talking about your favorite sons, but I need you to start a daughter's list and I want you to put me on it. So we thank God for you, amen. And to all of the other lovely ladies that are part of Mother's Cabinet. Lady Karen, you are indeed the epitome of grace. I'm honored to celebrate you as our first lady and my sister. Your fragrance is beautifully sweet. And to my honey bishop, Bishop Keith A. Kershaw. He is your chief and mine operating officer for the church. But to me for almost 37 years in September, he has been a husband. He's been a husband. And I stand here tonight honored to be his wife and proud that God has blessed his life to be able to serve the church in the way that he does. So the oil that flows for my life tonight, for some of you the first time, flows from his beard. Will you help me celebrate my husband, Bishop Keith A. Kershaw? We were blessed with one biological daughter Miss Rachel, mama love her baby. She's getting older, Mother Lewis, but so am I. And I told her, you'll never catch me, so you'll forever be my baby. To my Genesis family, some who are here, God bless you, and those of you who are watching online, you know I love you. And to, hallelujah, my extended family, to my extended family, Kojic family, I love all of you with the love of the Lord. I may not know your names to call, but I want you to know that I love you. To my prelate in South Carolina, Bishop Prelaw, I didn't forget you. I honor you and I celebrate you tonight and to Lady Prelaw and to the rest of my South Carolina family. I'm glad to be a part of Kojic, South Carolina. And I want to thank you in advance for your prayers and support of the gift that's on my life. Amen. Now you can start the clock. Our scripture that was sent to me came out of the book of Esther, several scriptures. The one that stayed with me the most is out of Esther chapter 4, verse 14. 
I read the scripture over and over and over and over again and asked the Lord, what is it you want to say to the people of the Lord? So I backed up in the book of Esther to chapter 2, actually chapter 1, but I'm going to read one scripture out of Esther chapter 2, verse 15, and then Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Can I teach my lesson? Esther 2 and 15 says, Now when the turn, listen, of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing. But with Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, all that he appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. Esther 4, verse 14, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, hallelujah, at this time, then shall their enlargement, thank you, Dr. Grant, hallelujah, and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Are you listening, Kojic family? If we don't get ourselves together, deliverance is going to arise from another place. Can I teach my lesson? The Bible says, hallelujah, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth, who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. The Amplified Version says, for if you remain silent at this time, Liberation and rescue will arise from the Jews from another place. And you and your father's house will perish. Since you did not help when you had the chance, hallelujah, and who knows whether you have attained royalty for such a time as this and for this very purpose. Can I talk? The general theme for this 73rd International Women's Convention as sent to me was holy women commissioned for the mission. My assignment, or rather my mission for this Thursday night Sunday school lesson presents in the form of a question. The question is, which mission? Title or towel. Which track are you on to complete your mission or the Great Commission? Are you on a title track or are you on a towel track? Title is simply a name that describes someone's position or job. Can I talk? This can sometimes even be interpreted as entitled. While the towel, I'm teaching, hallelujah, deals with serving. And the Bible talks about servant leadership. Tonight, I'd like to walk and try to teach Lady Karen you walk you through at least three mission types relating to the title carriers and the towel bearers. Mission number one, we'll deal with briefly behaviors of a title carrier. Mission number two, oh God, help right through here. Having an external yes with an internal no. Sila. Mission number three. You got to want the towel more than you want the title. Clap your hands. 
Commission simply means a group of people officially charged with a particular function. Of course, the Great Commission necessitates taking the gospel message to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Taking it to all nations. The good news is to be shared with all people. For all of us have sinned, listened, and fallen short of the glory of God. All people, hallelujah, by faith, listen, can receive God's provision and, and should be baptized into Christ. In Christ, there are no distinctions anymore between the Jew and the Gentile. Mission simply means that while our Bible may not specifically use the word mission, the concept is rooted biblically in truth. Mission signifies purposeful movement, being sent from one place to another for a purpose. Can I talk? The apostles of Jesus were among the first to be sent out on a mission to share what Jesus was proclaiming. Help me tonight. As an educator of over 35 years, I've been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost for a very, from a very young age. And I got saved the old school way. We're getting rid of a lot of old stuff, but I'm here to tell you that old things can last. Many of my education years in teaching, I taught in an elementary school as a speech-language pathologist. But many of the times of my encounters with my little babies from four-year-olds to the fifth grade class, I've had many God moments. Hallelujah. I didn't go to theological school. I went to an elementary school. And God would begin to teach me some things about himself. Hallelujah. As a special education teacher at times, one of the concepts I had to teach, listen, was the concept of choice. I worked with this population as well as the regular population. But for children with special needs or not, there are times in our teaching experience that we have to explain to them basic concepts. This is what you were talking about, Lady Karen, when people come into the church that are not of the church, hallelujah, they've not been to church, so they don't know how to do church. Can I talk here? For special needs, hallelujah, and particularly the concept of choice needs to be taught because it indeed is an abstract way of understanding a concept. So it needs to be taught in a different way due to their limited, for some, receptive and expressive language development. Somebody say, talk, Kershaw. Come on, if you're listening, say, I'm listening. To choose means to pick out or to select. Hallelujah. To select someone or to select something. You're selecting what you think might be the best, who's listening, or the most appropriate of two or more alternatives. If you're listening, say, I'm listening. The rhyme I'm going to use tonight, this is what the Lord gave me, to choose who is it is in the form of a children's game. The rhyme used to choose which mission track you are on in these last and evil days envelops from a children's game. Did I say a children's game? As the teacher, I would put two items, hallelujah, before my students. And for the sake of this lesson tonight, family, I put before you the choice, hallelujah, of being commissioned and getting a title or being commissioned for a towel. The subject matter that Mother Lewis has put out, holy women and men commissioned for the mission. I would take my student by the hand, hallelujah. I would allow them to point 
their finger. And I would put two choices before them, somebody say, to start with. The rhyme goes like this. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. Come on, you know it. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Now, the teaching concept in the beginning of choice worked until I started adding additional choices, like holy. like women, like commission, and happened so they would land on a choice that they didn't want, particularly that holy concept. Because holiness requires something out of you. Holiness requires that we let go of some things. Holiness ah, requires that we look a certain way. Holiness requires that we talk a certain way. Mm -hmm. Holiness requires that we hang with a certain kind of people. And because the church has been infiltrated, now we're making all kinds of choices. So, so what the writer did was, as it was when I was growing up, they added to the first rhyme. Mm -hmm. Because these other aspects of making the choice is now a little bit more complicated, more words to choose from, we added words in particular when we landed on something we didn't like. So it went like this. I'm teaching. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a mission by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Here we go. Our mother, Mother Lewis, our presiding bishop, our chief apostle. Let, put a pin right there. When I say that, that means I got to go somewhere and then I'm coming right back. Yes, yes. They cause, hallelujah, us to be able to make choices. Our presiding bishop, we recognize him as the chief apostle. Hallelujah. Some of you might have the title of bishop. Some of you might have the title of mother. But you are not the chief apostle. And you are not the general mother. Read your lesson, Kershaw, so we can finish. Any, meeny, miny, mo. Our general mother, our presiding bishop, our chief apostle told us to pick, listen, this one right over here. But the second part says, but I changed my mind. To pick this one right over here. Selah. My assignment is to commission you, the women of God, to queen up. I said my assignment is to commission you, women of God, to queen up. And men of God, for you to king up. You got to make a choice. No more eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Hallelujah. Bishop, mother... Listen to this prophetic piece. When they holler, when they start carrying on and acting like they don't know and have no understanding, hallelujah, the writer says, hallelujah, when they holler, let them go. Clap your hands. Say, I want towel more than title. When they holler, let them go. So the Lord sent me here to tell you, you got to queen up. I'm moving. Mission number one, the behavior of a titled or an entitled, hallelujah, mission. As I just indicated, 
Our baseline indicator for language development is your receptive and expressive language skills. Mm -hmm. How well you understand, hallelujah, and whatever I'm saying, the words that are coming out of my mouth, oh God, hallelujah, is manifested in expression. What comes out of your mouth, tell me where you are. You need Bible? 1 Corinthians 13, hallelujah, says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. Who's listening? I understood as a child, but when I became a man, when I became toweled, I put away childish things. Somebody say, put away childish things. Here we got to go. Husbands, you got a title. But title holder husbands have affairs. Towel barrel husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. Mother gave us strategies the other night. Hallelujah, how to make a little change. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mother. Mother, mother told us how to make a little change. Amen. She said, get in that shower on your, listen, this is the part I want you to catch. Y'all got the shower part, but I want you to get this. She said, your husband. She, she said, get in the shower, but get in the shower on your husband back. If he's not yours, Don't get in the shower. It's not fitting to work out too good for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, hallelujah, has a list. I'm teaching my lesson, that's all. The Bible has a list of titles that we ascribe for. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. These aren't the only titles, but these are the most sought after. Ephesians 4 and 11 says, and Christ gave them gifts to the church. By the way, these are spiritual gifts, not just titles. So Christ gave himself, hallelujah, apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors and teachers to equip the people for work of service, for the works of the towel, for the works of the towel, for the works of the people. You don't need a towel if you don't have people with dirty feet. Read your Bible. So, the body of Christ, the Bible says, may be built up until we reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, 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 attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, this five-fold ministry gift are supposed to be towel bearers, not towel-lets. Sila. No, not the kind that you use to wipe with. I mean, the towel let. A titled towel bearer that is bearing and only serving lets. Let a lie stay open. Let an affair stay covered. Let abuse get gone away with and don't deal with it. I can't get nobody to help me. Let hatred ah, and bitterness build up in the heart, hallelujah, of our brothers and sisters. Let perversion run rapid. I said towel, let. The apostolic gifting is supposed to be a gift of leadership. Mm -hmm. The apostolic gifting carries a large vision and is able to draw others into the work of God. But an apostolic towelette has no vision. 
and the people perish. Prophetic gifting, the toweled prophets receive direction from God to help people navigate challenges and situations, release warnings, but the towel-let prophet raises offerings and make earthly promises if you give. Put a pin right there. These towelette prophets are stuck, I heard the Holy Ghost say, on the initial sign of being filled. They perfected the tongue. Listen, towelettes. Tongues are not the only sign of being filled. The Bible says it's the initial sign. And for those of you who have been to school, if they're going to itemize as the initial sign, then there must be some other signs to follow. If you feel a way right through there, that's called conviction. The evangelist as a gift is supposed to share the good news. Did I say good news? And lead others to Christ. We as evangelists are excited to share a gospel that builds up the church, that builds up the church in attendance and builds up the church in maturity. But towelette evangelists, they just got a bunch of news and a bunch of rhyme and a bunch of rhythm. What about the pastoral gifting? I'm almost done. The pastoral gifting is to give an account before God. Hallelujah. Both for themselves and also for the believers in their care. Read Hebrews 13 and 17. Toweled pastors lead their sheep, but towelette pastors sleep with them. Sheila. Teachers as a gift. A teacher, a teacher is supposed to be someone who is responsible for instructing others in the things and in the ways of God. They only do this by breaking down, listen, the word of God. That can be in the Bible, hallelujah. They teach it sometimes from the pulpit or from a classroom. It makes no difference. Teachers have a heart to equip people and be able to help them study the Bible on their own. Towelette teachers, sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. We don't know what you are talking about. The Lord began to deal with me, to remind me, hallelujah, that he is soon to return. His return is held up in part because he said the church doesn't look enough like him. We got a lot of title carriers, but very few towel bearers. I'll say it again if you feel a way right there. That's called conviction. The cast in this particular story tonight involves a king, Vashti, Mordecai, Esther, Haman, and the story in part of the Jews. The story starts in Esther chapter 1 with a king's feast that lasted for 180 days. He would show the riches of his glory and his splendor and pomp of his greatness. At the end of the 180 days, the king would have a feast lasting for seven days in the court of the garden of his palace. Teach Kershaw. Read chapter 1, verse 9. Queen Vashti, hallelujah, also gave a feast for the women in her palace, but her feast and the palace belong to King Ahasuerus. Don't miss that. Verse 10, the Bible says, on the seventh day, the king commanded. On verse 11, he said he commanded that the queen be before him with her royal crown to show her beauty. Verse 12, but Queen Vashti did a eeny meeny 
mine and moe. And Vashti, for whatever reason, don't have time to deal with it tonight, refused to come at the king's command. And when she refused, the king became enraged and made a decision to send her away permanently. She was dethroned for her refusal. Somebody say refusal. Refusal is viewed as defiance, noncompliance, rejection, abnegation, disobedience. Put a pen right there. Rejection and disobedience, according to 1 Samuel 15 and 23, pushes the title bearer to a different source. For rebellion is as serious as the sin of divination. And disobedience is as serious as false religion and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, the Bible says, he also has rejected you as king. She was dethroned for her refusal to appear at the king's banquet to show her beauty. Her title as queen was taken away. Why? Because Vashti, who was the current title holder as queen, disobeyed the king's request, which most title holders are prone to do, disobey. The setting, hallelujah, in motion, hallelujah, of her disobedience started a chain of events that will eventually, as you know, make the Jewish Esther the queen of Persia. Mission number two, the external yes and the internal no. It's been showing up, hallelujah, in our Sunday school lessons. It's been showing up in our preaching. It's been showing up in our pastoring. It's been showing up in working the altar. It's been showing up in our marriages. Oh, yes, you said I do, but you don't. Hallelujah. We are known ah, as, that means I'm enjoying my own self. We are known Oh, you don't have to clap. I'm enjoying my own self. Hallelujah. We, we are known as the Yes Lord Church. Mm -hmm. It is our foundation. Mm -hmm. The Bible asks uh -huh, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Mm -hmm. In addition to making a choice, hallelujah, don't miss this, there is a submission that has to occur, hallelujah. The Bible teaches, hallelujah, that external yeses and internal noes, when we sing yes, hallelujah, to a capital L-O-R-D, but we refuse to yield. Psalm 78, 36 and 37, Israel's had this struggle. Israel's struggle, hallelujah, was yielding to God. When they did yield to their temptations, it always led them to sin against God. Yes, Joel 2, not in 28, we'll get there, but Joel 2 in 25, hallelujah, has begun to saturate our yes, Lord. Our external yeses and our internal noes has become like a swarming locust, a crawling locust, a chewing locust, and God says, this great army that I've sent to the church. Yeah, we are in a spiritual pandemic. Hallelujah. We are in a spiritual crisis with this external yeses and internal no. We look the part, but we ain't got no power. Mm -hmm. We sound the part, but we ain't got no power. Don't know the difference between a demon, hallelujah, and a mosquito, hallelujah. So we've been battling title and towel for a long time. I'm just trying to teach my lesson. I'm almost done, hallelujah. The Bible says in the word of God, let the wheat and the tear grow together. And a day is coming, a day is coming when he will separate them. 
But somehow we've made it our mission to try to do the separating. Mm -hmm. Because now the church, hallelujah, has a lot of tear tendencies. We've stopped putting a difference between holy and unholy. Mm -hmm. We've stopped putting a difference between clean and unclean. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost says that there is no distinction in the sound. Hallelujah. We can't tell if it's piped or harp. Can I teach my lesson? Mm -hmm. So we are saying yes on the outside. Hallelujah. Knowing full well that we've made another choice on the inside. Clap your hands and say, I'd rather be toweled than titled. I'm almost done. Mission number three. I'm here to declare today that as for me in my house, I'm serving the Lord. I choose the towel over the title. Mm -hmm. Mission, hallelujah, is possible, mother, hallelujah. Like in the saga, Mission Impossible, hallelujah, where the tape starts to play and one good question comes through, should you decide to accept the mission. Mm -hmm. This mission is going to expire in just a few days. I trust that by the end of this convention that you will choose the towel over the title. Every year we, we give license to missionaries that go missing. We give papers to elders and and, 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 and other people, I don't know what they do on their side, amen, but I just know that when we come to the convention, not this one, but I'm talking even in my local state, amen, more papers was given out than more people come, hallelujah. Because having a, tie, a title is important to some people. Mm -hmm. Some, hallelujah, get their papers and they go other places. They don't even stay to serve in the place where they've been titled, hallelujah. They go all the place and evangelize and witness and share and do all of these things, hallelujah, with their letters behind their name. Forgetting the fact that when you are a towel bearer, it's about service, hallelujah. Esther 4 and 14 brings us to the story, glory to God, mm -hmm, where Mordecai is suggesting to Esther, hallelujah, that the possibility that you might become queen mm -hmm, for such a time as this, hallelujah, that God has toweled you, hallelujah, for such a time as this, hallelujah. He reinforces the idea that, hallelujah, all of Esther's life, hallelujah, has been a series of unusual events, hallelujah, that led to her becoming queen mm -hmm, because there was a greater purpose for her, hallelujah. Vision, glory to God, means that you should have a good attitude when you are tired. Hallelujah. You don't get frustrated over the mission and get off course and get out of character when you are towel. Mm -hmm. When you got mission in you, hallelujah. Yes, mother, you can be in a club, but it'll make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I got the same story as you, hallelujah. I got saved very early, glory to God, but I wanted the experience of going to the club. So I went to the club, and my first problem is that it was too dark in there. Mm -hmm. I don't like being in the dark, hallelujah. So I'm sitting over there, mother, with my saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost self, hallelujah. And oh, here come the fellas. What you say? They reach their hand out, hallelujah. You don't know what they want, so I'm looking at him like what? Hallelujah. He had enough sense to say, I want to take you on the dance floor. Well, I could uh, get up and go to the dance floor. My problem with being on the dance floor was not that I didn't know how to dance, but I really did it because this was my first dance. But my problem was he pulled me too close. Because when you are a towel bearer, you can't rub up against anything. Mm -hmm. 
Now, let me tell you, I just told you in the beginning that Bishop Kershaw and I will be married for almost 37 years in, in, in September. Hallelujah. But can I tell you, in order to park in my garage, you need at least three carrots. Stop letting these bozos park, hallelujah, in your garage, hallelujah, and they don't want to pay the piper, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that towelers don't let people rub up on them. You don't get the rub on me and talking about, excuse me. No, you getting ready to get bust in the throat, hallelujah. Somebody say, in Jesus' name, though, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Mother, I had to get out of the club because I was uncomfortable because I didn't know at that point that I had mission on the inside of me. I had no view that one day I would be speaking in the women's convention. All I know that I was uncomfortable with somebody being that close to me. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you are not uncomfortable, hallelujah, perhaps yours didn't happen early in life. Perhaps some of yours have happened later in life. But by now, glory to God, I'm here to tell you tonight that you ought to become uncomfortable with some things when you are a towel bearer. Mm -hmm. Pastoring, evangelizing, and clubbing don't go together. If you think that's okay, I'm here to tell you tonight that you are indeed a towel let. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that title missionaries hear commands as optional. While towel bearers, hallelujah, hear them as a mission. And what is birthed on the inside of you is, if I perish, I perish, but I got to go and see the king. Some of you have been going through some things in your life unexplainable, hallelujah. And what you are going through is because you've gotten the oil of the title mixed up with the oil of the towel, hallelujah. You've not gotten to the place that if I perish, I perish, but I'm getting delivered from this sin. If I perish, I perish, but I'm going to stop this ton of lying. If I perish, I perish, but I'm not sleeping with another woman's husband. I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to tell you today, hallelujah, Vashti had an invitation to go see the king, hallelujah. Esther didn't have an invitation, but she had a mission to get to the king, hallelujah. Vashti was titled while Esther was toweled. Can I teach? Vashti had an external yes with an internal no. Mm -hmm. While Esther, from her circumstances, seemed to have an external no, but an internal yes. Mm -hmm. Having this external yes, but this internal no is like serving clean water in a dirty glass. I thank God, hallelujah, that when you are a toweled chief apostle, nobody else might not see it, but the chief apostle can look at a glass that looks clean to everybody else. A general supervisor that's toweled can look at a glass that looks clean to everybody else, and all of a sudden, uh-uh-uh, there's a spot right there. I need you to come and bring me a clean glass. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that as a tower people, I've noticed, hallelujah, that we get dirty sometimes. Hallelujah. But you got to bring the attention uh -huh, to the service in the house of God. And you got to ask them, hallelujah, that I need some clean water. I'm here to tell you today that Towelers, pay attention to what God is doing. Are there any women in the house that's been going through a lot of dirty situations, but you need God today 
You need God to create in you a clean heart and renew the right spirit on the inside of you. I told you in the beginning that Esther required nothing. Mm -hmm. Esther required nothing. She took her baths. She laid in her perfume. She stayed there for a whole year. But now it's time for me to go before the king. And the Bible says that Esther required nothing. Even though she was orphaned, even though she was adopted, even though she probably didn't feel like she was next in line. She didn't have any parents. But I'm here to tell you that as a result of this conference, God is positioning some of you. God is posturing some of you. You got to get rid of the eeny meeny, mighty mo. Do you remember David? David was postured and positioned to be a towel bearer, to be a king. Hallelujah, glory to God. But he did his obedience training attending Sheep mm -hmm. University while his brothers, I said his brothers, were enrolled in the prestigious Goliath University. David developed his internal yes with lions and with bears. He got his towel. I said he got his towel. Anybody want a towel tonight? He got his towel on the day when his daddy told him to take his brothers some lunch. He got called to serve. He got his mission statement. Go serve your brother's lunch. His towel manifested. In serving his brothers, he didn't see something floating in his water, but he heard something that contradicted his lesson. Sarah was childless until she was 90 years old. God made a promise. Thank you, sister. He made a promise to Abraham that he would be the father of nations. But if you're going to be a father, you need a mother. Can I teach my lesson? The Bible says that she would conceive and bear a son. Sarah's towel I'm 
I'm getting rid of the title. Tonight, I want to give God a chance to work on the towel. I need you to clap your hands. I need you to open your mouth and prophesy to yourself that I am a towel bearer. Say, I am a towel bearer. What does that look like for me, Sister Kershaw? That looks like from this day forward, as a towel bearer, you can lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. What does that look like? You can tread on serpents and they will not harm you. What does that look like? It looks like God's glory sitting on you like cloven tongues of fire. I know you've been speaking in the same tongues since the last women's convention, but tonight is a night of filling. Tonight is a night of towels. I need you to open your mouth and begin to give God praise. Why did they pick me? Because a towel is on the inside of you. I didn't get to go through my whole list, but Mary even was a towel bearer. Mary had the ultimate yes on the inside of her. Saints of God, if we're going to be used by God, we got to stop, hallelujah, just saying yes in a song. But you got to lift your hands. Not just the women, but the men also. And say, Lord, here I am. If you can use anybody, you can use me. Hallelujah, glory to God. Bishop, I told you when you became the presiding bishop that God said to tell you that he's given you an oil. Now, last night we discovered, hallelujah, and from the last convention, that the church is debt free. The woman of God came through with the milk and honey on last night. And we are secure in our belief that God is going to bring us to a good land. I told Bishop, hallelujah, some years ago when he became the presiding bishop, I said, God has called you to be a repairer of the breach. The all tonight, hallelujah, from our chief apostle is to repair yet this breach where we are missing our missions, where we are missing our yeses, where we are not yielding to God. Lift your hands now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. And we give you my shame. We give you praise. And we give you honor. And we give you glory that tonight you put a line between title carriers and towel bearers. Some of you think because you're not in one of the five-fold ministry areas that your ministry gift has gone unnoticed. But I'm here to tell you tonight that God is going to turn, I heard the woman of God say, every no into a yes. That's a good place to give him some praise. So God sent me here to teach this Sunday school lesson tonight. For those of you who have been struggling, hallelujah. What do I do when I just got fired? Not fired so much in the natural, but I don't seem to sense the power of God in my life anymore. When it seems like my gifting 
doesn't make sense. Tonight, God wants to refill us. We are a holy people. And you can't be holy without the Spirit of God. So you got to ask him, Lord, fill me again. You can't get filled in the convocation and don't fill up again until next year this time. I forgot to wear my bandana that said that I'm commissioned. Hallelujah. I'm commissioned. I'm on a mission to get us to look like Jesus. Because when he comes back, he's coming looking for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Is there anybody in the house tonight that says, God, my towel has gotten dirty and I need you, hallelujah, to give me a new towel. I need you to clean me up again. The altar isn't supposed to be a place of embarrassment. It's a whosoever will. Let him come. So the altar is now open. I want to pray for you, and I'm taking my seat. I want to pray for you tonight, hallelujah, that if your towel has been hung up, hallelujah, if your towel has gotten dirty, hallelujah, here we stand tonight to welcome you to the well, to the well that never runs dry, to the well that springeth, hallelujah, with joy that overflows. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to come to the altar so that we can pray. We can pray together as a family that God will strengthen us, that God will help our unbelief. Those of you who become weary in ministry, those of you who have become tired, hallelujah, that you're not being used, those of you who are concerned by watching other people, seems like they are getting away with it. I'm here to tell you tonight that nobody is getting away. Come on, you got about 10 more seconds. Hallelujah. If I were you, I would come. I would come to the altar with a yes, Lord, in my heart. I would come to the altar with a yes, Lord, in my spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Five more seconds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, I'm waiting about 10 more of you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. For these who have come, hallelujah, with their hands lifted and their hearts open, saying, Lord, I need my towel. I'm giving up the title. I'm casting the spirit of Vashti off of me. No longer telling you no. No longer refusing to be used by you. Tonight, I stretch my hands. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Saying, Lord, I'm available. I want to be used by you. I want to be used by you. 
I want to be used by you. Father, I need you to fill me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Not just the force of a tank. But Father, I need you to fill me so that I can be used by you. In the name of Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on us tonight. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall in this house tonight. Those of you that are in your seat, begin to clap your hands and open your mouth and ask God for the feeling. Ask God for the power. Ask God for the anointing. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name, and we give you the glory for being our God, for showing us where we are. I'm no longer going to dance over it. I'm not going to speak in initial tongues over it. My hands are up, and I'm submitted to you tonight. I'm submitted to you tonight for you to feel me over again. If you can use anybody, Lord, you can use me. So, Father, we thank you right now for the power of the Holy Ghost, for those that will receive you tonight. Come on, lift your hands if you need a filling. Hallelujah. Those that need a refilling tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And like cloven tongues of fire, sit on us tonight. 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 I need the power of the Holy Ghost. I need the power of the Holy Ghost to fall afresh on me. Clap your hands, open your mouth, and say, fall afresh. Fall afresh on me. Come on, fall afresh. Fall afresh on me. Holy Ghost, have your way tonight. Holy Ghost, have your way tonight. Holy Ghost, have your way hey. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the opportunity to be at the altar, to be at a place where we can get our towels clean for service. Clap your hands as you're able and give God a praise. Clap your hands as you're able and give God a praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> 